EXM Live, you guys. I just wanted to let you know that I just spent a weekend in Turkey's wine capital, which is a pretty little town called Shirinje on the Aegean coast. And it was so much fun that I felt inspired to make a travel video covering everything I wish I had known before going. I hope you find it useful. If you're in a hurry or want to skip straight to a particular section of the video, these are the timestamps you need. If not, please stay tuned for everything you need to know about the wine, history, and wine of Shirinje, which is one of the most quirky and pretty Turkish towns I've been to. Thanks for watching, and iyolculuklar! Why visit Shirinje? Well, there's the history, the friendly locals, the traditional Greek houses, and the must-see Roman ruins of Ephesus. But the main reason that people love Shirinje is the wine. That's right. If you're thinking that Turkey isn't a wine country, you'll be pleasantly surprised to find that the Turks are relatively big drinkers, at least along the Aegean coast, where a lot of Sharia uncompliant Greek customs survive. The local viniculture revolves around the production of a wide and unique array of sweet fruit wines, alongside more traditional, drier varieties. Other than the booze, the local population's laid-back attitude makes for friendly hosts, cozy hilltop bars, good food, and affordable accommodation. It's also easily reached by bus from the Aegean region or by plane via Izmir from anywhere else. And the locals speak enough English for anyone to get by. You can see the whole town in 20 minutes if you're in a hurry or reasonably sober. This video assumes you are neither. With its 600 strong population, Shirinje is both small and compact. This is a good thing because most streets have no name or no sign or neither, both in reality and on whatever map you're looking at, including this one. The center of the town is roughly anything inside this circle, which is where most bars, restaurants, accommodation and sites are located. Taxis and buses will drop you off in or around the bus station just to the north. Many paths around the town are uneven and steep, and the stones get slippery in wet weather, so sturdy shoes are a good idea, especially if you are planning on drinking a lot of wine. There are well-trodden hiking trails that stretch out of the center, offering excellent sunset views of the town and the surrounding valley. Shirinje is 17 kilometers inland from the Aegean Sea at an elevation of 500 meters. It is about 6 kilometers east of the nearest, instantly forgettable city of Selçuk, which you will probably have to pass through. Like the rest of Izmir province, Shirinje has a Mediterranean climate, meaning that winters are cold and rainy, summers are uncomfortably hot, and the best times to visit are either in the spring, April to May, or in the autumn, September to November, when daytime temperatures are around 16 degrees Celsius. One of the most important cities in classical history was Ephesus, a founding city-state of the Greek Ionian League and later the second city of the Roman Empire. When its harbor silted up to become a disease-ridden swamp, Ephesus' importance declined until it was little more than a village arranged around the ruins of the great city. After the Ottoman conquest of Constantinople finally ended the Byzantine and or Roman Empire, Ephesus was abandoned for good in the 15th century when its remaining Greek-speaking inhabitants set off to start a new life among the secluded hills about 10 kilometers inland. According to local legend, they named their new town Chirkinje, roughly meaning ugly, hoping that it would discourage others from following them. This worked surprisingly well until World War I and the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. The subsequent war between the new Turkish Republic and the only slightly less new Greek Republic between 1919 and 1922 resulted in a thumping victory for the Turks under the leadership of their new commander-in-chief Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, who literally drove the Greek army into the sea at Izmir. Part of the post-war reconciliation involved the two countries exchanging each other's respective populations. Thus, the inhabitants of Shirinje were relocated to Greece. In turn, the relocated Turks that settled in the town were so unimpressed by their new home's uninspiring name that in 1926 the governor of Izmir province renamed it Shirinje, roughly meaning cute. Greek writer Dido Sotirio was a native of Shirinje, which provides the setting for her novel Farewell Anatolia, which chronicles the Greco-Turkish war and subsequent exchange of populations. Most of modern-day Shirinje was built in the 1800s and was declared a national heritage site in the 1990s, following a campaign by Turkish intellectual and philanthropist Sevan Nishanyan, who had settled there to open a school. 
Since then, the only noteworthy news coverage of Schiringer was when scholars of Mayan astrology revealed that the world was going to end on the 21st of December 2012. It was also established that the only place on Earth that the Mayans foretold would survive the apocalypse exactly matched Schiringer's location. This resulted in hordes of mad New Age types piling into the town, much to the confusion of the locals. The new inhabitants all sheepishly left after a few days, putting a skip in the step of Turkish tabloid journalists. Schiringer isn't really a place you come to see sights, so much as to soak up the local atmosphere and booze. But there are a few local points of interest that you should know about. The most evocative image of Schiringer is that of the classically designed Greek houses that stud the valley sides around the town centre. Though most of these wood and stone villas are little more than 100 years old, they have been preserved in their original Greek style, which makes for a picture-perfect backdrop to the town's other attractions. The local museum is housed inside restaurant Artemis, near the bus station. No explanation is given for this, but the good news is that it is effectively free and open as long as the restaurant is serving. The museum and restaurant are housed inside what used to be the local Greek school, where a room of panels displays local curiosities, mostly relating to the original inhabitants and their migration. At the top of the hill is the original Greek structure of the Church of St. John the Baptist, which today serves the community as an atmospheric art gallery. The church you see today dates from 1805 and is built on top of a much earlier church built in the 1500s by the town's Christian founders. In the center of the town, the ablutions area of the otherwise unremarkable Schiringer Mosque serves as a communal restroom for a dozen or so local wine bars that do not have their own toilet facilities, which seems to be strangely okay with the locals. If hiking around vineyards is your thing, you've come to the right place. There are no established hiking trails, but paths lead out of the village through hundreds of vineyards and orchards and up the sides of the surrounding hills. The only day trip worth the effort is Ephesus, Turkey's top archaeological attraction and some of the best preserved Roman ruins in the world. If you are making it as far as Schiringer and have half a day to spare, this is a must. For history buffs, the site lies alongside the ruins of what used to be the Temple of Artemis, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, which is now little more than a pillar in a swamp. Ephesus is a short bus ride or longer walk away from Selçuk. The site is open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and costs 60 lira or 9 euros. Izmir is big, modern and boring. Kushadasa is smaller, more boring and full of package tourists and package tourist prices. Nevertheless, you will probably pass through at least one of these otherwise unworthy cities on your way to Shiranjay or back. Izmir's fancy Adnan Menderes airport has regular flights to all big cities in Turkey and some beyond. From here, take an overland train or minibus to Selçuk and then a 15-minute local bus to Shiranjay. Buses also regularly run the 20 kilometers between Selçuk and Kushadasa. Full disclosure, there is nothing very remarkable about the food in Shiringir, which leaves center stage to the liquid accompaniment. But Turkish staples like manta and gözleme are good quality and surprisingly good value, as are regional Aegean specialities like stuffed zucchini flowers, which you should definitely try. All food is halal, and there are an unusually large number of vegetarian or even vegan options, usually in the form of mezes. Consuming solids in Turkey is a cue for a Turkish coffee, so join the locals in a thimble-sized but punch-packing brew at the covered market or the main street. Turk kavisi in Şirince is served in a traditional manner by boiling your cezve of coffee in a pit of heated sand in the center of your table, which is fun, impractical and unsafe. Technically, daylife in Şirince sees as much drinking as does nightlife. There are so many wine-tasting places that there is no point listing them, but they are all over the center and all sell largely the same thing. There are three local wine producers with similar offerings, all made with some or other combination of grapes, fresh fruit and concentrates. The finished products are on sale at pretty much every commercial outlet in town. The vendors make a sport of cheerfully doling out samplers of their wine to any and all passers-by. Don't be shy to try a couple of tasters if you're ordering a glass, or even if you're not. One word of warning for dry wine fans. Almost all the wine here ranges from very sweet to extremely sweet. Even if that's how you like it, it gets a bit much after a few glasses. 
For such a popular spot, Sirenje has remarkably good value accommodation options, most of which are clustered around the center, include a breakfast option and have decent Wi-Fi. We can recommend Hotel Diva, which has just a few cozy rooms with en-suites and wonderful panoramic views of the town. Another good option is Shirinjem Pension, which has clean rooms with private bathrooms and very helpful staff. The associated restaurant isn't bad either, and the price of the hotel room includes a truly epic breakfast. If you're thinking glitzy retail therapy binge, you might be disappointed. However, if you're into obscure, hand-picked mountain herbs, traditional handicrafts, and of course wine, you will be totally okay. The main streets around the center are studded with enthusiastic, but not pushy, peddlers of jewelry, homemade jams, and of course, booze. That was it. I hope you found my video useful. If not, please do send me any suggestions, advice, or personal abuse that could help make it better. Please also get in touch if you'd like to help me make more videos like this one. And make sure you check out my other videos and all the other cool stuff that you don't want to be missing out on while you're in Turkey. Thanks for watching and Kendini Yabak.